Crowley, that is disgusting. Ew. Look at the drool. Well, hello and welcome back to our cabin. We are in the full swing of winter here in Alaska. We're just about done with the first week of January and it's still pretty chilly. Today's a six degrees or so. At least we're not in the negative temps, right? But we have tons of snow this time of year. And so a lot of times we like to get out of the cabin so we don't get cabin fever and come play outside with the kids and the dogs. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. The boys have had so much fun on their snowboards this season so far. And then we also had another lovely viewer that bought the boys this really amazing toboggan. I actually had never even heard of a toboggan. I just heard of like snow sleds. I didn't know there was such a thing as like a wooden sled like you see in like the old Christmas movies. Well, apparently there is and this thing is beautiful and the boys have been having a blast with it. Joe just waxed it really good this morning so it's going good and fast down the hill. I think Joe and I have some plans of clearing some snow off the uh, structures around the property and he also has to change the oil in the generator which is regular maintenance that we do. As you guys know, we're off grid here in Alaska. 100% solar. So on days like this, when we don't get a lot of sun, we do use the generator to supplement for the uh, energy for the batteries when we don't get it from the sun. So the maintenance on the generators is a regular thing for Joe. Thankfully, he's a mechanic and he's just good at all that kind of stuff and I never have to worry about it. See ya. See ya. Work it, Kennel. Work. Squeeze. <gasps> Feel the burn, baby. <laughs> Hurry it up in the front. Oh, good job. Look at this beautiful toboggan. Look at that. LL Bean. Yes. Practically fit the whole family on this thing. Let's go, P. Get on the Raquel and let's see you both go at the same time.
Joe is just one big kid out here. You know, all the things that you guys see them doing, it's all Joe's idea. Pulling the snowboards behind the Polaris, like the trails out here and the clearing that he makes for the snow machine. He's just a big kid. string do anything for me? I don't off. think what? Okay. Ah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh no! Ah. Ah. Oh yeah baby! Yeah Oh record. That's cause there's more weight in here Joe. Yeah a lot more. A lot more? Why do you always say that? <laughs> I got extra two, 250 in here. Hi. Hello. Do you want to get one? <laughs> oh. I don't think we got the record, buddy. You yeah. guys going to break out the snow machines or what? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's do it. We probably have like 30 minutes of daylight left. <laughs> you actually shoveled the dog pee? Last time I was editing my video, ooh, I'm cold. You can tell when you get cold because you start slurring your speech like you're drunk. I'm editing my video. I was editing the video and I was like, there's yellow snow all over the property because the dog's peeing everywhere. It's like, you have this beautiful serene white drop, drop back, backdrop. But then there's like yellow pee, like poof, 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 splotched all over. He actually came, he heard me. I wasn't saying it was a problem. I was just like, it's gross. You see yellow snow. <laughs> so he's like, you're welcome. I'm like, you're welcome for what? And he's like, did you see any yellow snow out here this morning? So he came out and covered the yellow pea snow with fresh snow. Joe, he's such a, you know, his love language is acts of service. I didn't ask for him to cover the pea. That's really sweet though that he covered the pea. And soft. It's soft. Look at your little white mustache. <laughs> Is it cold? I just, yeah. I just dig under that stuff. And get the white snow, right? Mm -hmm. Don't want to eat the yellow snow. Uh uh. Because you know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> So today is a really, really big day for Kellen. Kellen is going to ride the snow machine by himself for the very first time. He tried it once when he first got here, like last February or March, and uh, it didn't turn out so great, but he was seven and it takes, you know, getting used to the throttle and how to work it. So he's been asking Joe for months and months and months and throughout the whole summer, like when the winter comes, am I get, gonna get to drive a snow machine? And Joe's like, I don't know, we'll see how you do. You know, see if you're responsible enough. You show me you're responsible. Maybe I'll teach you how to ride the snow machine. So Joe came out last night after the boys were already in for the night without them knowing and made a bunch of trails out here in the clearing, packed them down with the snow machine so that they can come out and ride snow machines today.
our little baby. He's so cute. He's taking it nice and easy. <laughs> This is a great place for them to, to learn and to play on these snow machines. There's nothing out here that they're gonna get hurt on. These trails are packed down really good, nice and flat, no crazy hills. Maybe once he gets good enough, we can take him up into the tree line. Joe has a really awesome trail that he, actually a couple of them that he made in the trees. We have 15 acres here. So when we're harvesting firewood in our videos, we're doing it here on our property. And we just take our trails that Joe's created throughout the woods and we go get firewood out there. So there's some pretty awesome trails with some little hills, nothing too crazy. That would be really fun for him once he gets the hang of it.
believe it or not, there's a picnic table under there. <laughs> Look. That's the, the top of it. It's the picnic table. <laughs> Good morning, friends. You know, sunrise right now where we're at in Alaska is at 10, 18 in the morning. I mean, what are we really doing with ourselves? That's like almost lunchtime. <laughs> and my body does not want to get up before the sun comes up. And I'm normally like, I wouldn't say I'm like an early morning person. I'm actually not a morning person at all. But I'm usually like a 7, 7.30 in the morning type of girl. That's usually when my body wakes up on its own, like if I'm not waking up with an alarm clock. And now that the sun's not coming up until super late, my body is sleeping until then. Like my, if I don't get up to an alarm, my body is not waking up until like 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. And we've been on Christmas break, so 
every year, like my kids know, Christmas break, like all bets are off. We're up late watching movies, we're sleeping in, like routine and schedule is out the window. And for someone like me that's like extremely routine oriented and I'm very structured throughout the year, it is really nice to have that time during the year to just completely let go. And I typically do that around Christmas time. We take like a full two weeks off. Um, like we start school tomorrow. I think tomorrow is, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow's January 8th. So um, we started the week of Christmas. We took that off. And then the whole first week of January, we take off. So we get a really good solid two weeks off every year from homeschool. And then our summer break, of course. And it's like, all bets are off. Like I'm like, stay up late, watch movies within reason, right? We're not doing two, three o'clock in the morning, but you know what I mean? So it's funny. Like I'm not, I don't struggle with depression up here in Alaska with the darkness. I, I've never struggled with that. I have no issue with that. It's just legitimately my body is like, girl, get back in bed. The sun's not up. What are you doing? So, uh, but yeah, tomorrow we start school back on the homeschool routine. And so it's just getting into bed a little bit earlier so that I can get up earlier. I like to kind of be on more of a routine during the school day, but it is crazy. The sun is setting around, I don't Man, Joe just told me this morning, I already forgot. I don't know. It's like 4.30, it starts to get dark right now. So the sun's coming up around 10, 20 in the morning and setting around 4.30. So 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. We have about five or six hours of daylight right now. But still can't believe it's January. Like before you know it, it's going to be breakup. And Joe and I were sitting here over coffee this morning. We always do this. Those that are project people like we are, you'll understand. We constantly have like drawings, we dream and we fantasize and we discuss over coffee, like future plans for the homestead. And our biggest goals for this summer is my garden and greenhouse area and Joe's garage. So as soon as the snow is gone, we are gonna hit the ground running this spring. And you know, we have, I've shared with you guys where we're putting the greenhouse. We're putting it down below where the solar panel is because our, our cabin is built up on a bluff. So it's a sloped hill. And I think what we're going to do is kind of a tiered garden effect, like a terrace garden down that sloped hill. So we're going to have like a couple really long, big mounded rows for like growing potatoes and onions and garlic. And then a couple of those terraces for some raised beds. And my thought is just doing like really rustic raised beds, like enclosing them with big logs, you know, just keeping it that Alaska feel. And then of course the bottom of that hill, we will have the greenhouse. So that's my plan for that whole area below the solar panel, the solar panels, because it is South facing. So that area gets the most sunlight during all seasons of the year, actually. But in the summer, it will be great for a garden. So we're thinking about that. And we're like, all right, we're going to have to rent a tractor. We have a lot of tree stumps in that area from digging or from felling all the trees to clear the way for the solar panel. So we have a lot of tree stumps over in that area that need to get pulled out. And then we have to flatten it, bring in some topsoil. But that's our plan is to just kind of do a tiered effect with some raised beds. And of course, we're gonna have to fence all that in with really tall fencing to keep the moose out. But that's the plan for the garden. And I'm just sitting here fantasizing and chatting with Joe, dreaming of my future garden. It's been a couple years since I've, I've been able to really garden because you guys know we sold the house in Virginia and moved into an apartment for a year. So I did do a little balcony garden at the apartment, but it was nowhere near the scale of a garden that we normally do. So I'm really excited. Gardens grow really well here in Alaska. The climate is great in the summer. In Virginia, we always had a good garden but a lot of the crops uh, did not do so well because of the heat. It got extremely hot in the summertime. The humidity was outrageous, uh, but things grow really well here in Alaska. So I'm super excited for our garden this year. So I am not gonna be able to start my own seedlings because we don't have a greenhouse and there is just no space in this little tiny cabin. Um, we've done seedlings in our house before, but there's not enough space for the, that in the cabin. There's just not. And thinking of the cats getting into them, and we, we had our cats in Virginia ate all my seedlings once, and it's just drama. So what I've decided for this year 
is we have a really good friend that does a amazing greenhouse every year and they sell starts off at the nursery. And so I reached out to him. He was actually our realtor that sold us our beautiful homestead here in Alaska. Him and his girlfriend have an amazing, amazing garden every year. So I reached out to him and I said, look, we don't have a greenhouse yet. The plan is to build the greenhouse this summer. Um, so can we buy all of our starts from you guys? I'd like to support what you do. And um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get starts from them, get those transplanted into our garden beds and everything that we're going to do. And we'll have that little outside raised bed garden area going this summer while we are building our greenhouse. And then next year, 2025, we should be able to start our own seedlings and everything in our own greenhouse. But that's the plan. That's the plan for the garden. And uh, I'm excited. I can't wait. So for the garage, Joe and I have been thinking of what we want to do for that. And we're going to be digging out the mountain over here where we currently have those two sheds. You guys have seen those sheds on our videos. Those sheds are essentially the only storage space that we have right now on the property. And one of them is kind of Joe's garage shed, right? He's got a little workbench in there. He's got all his tools in there. And um, it's just been a temporary thing because we don't have a garage. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to end up moving those sheds out of that area digging out the mountain there with the tractor, flattening that out. We have a lot of land back there. Um, as you guys know from a lot of our drone shots, there's not a lot of open flat space around our cabin because we're built up on a bluff here. We cannot utilize the space down in the clearing where the pond is because that's all muskeg. It's all marsh and mush down there. So that's unusable land for the most part and it's just really pretty to look at, right? So I think we're gonna dig out this mountain flatten that out really good. And we're thinking about doing like a barn dominium with two big 40 foot connexes back there. So connexes are great. They're sturdy. They're watertight as long as you get good ones that are in good condition. So we've been looking on Pinterest and on the internet for some inspo, some inspiration as to what we would like to do. And there are really some awesome designs with what you can do with connexes. So I'll pop in a picture here of kind of what we're thinking. So we'd like to have two 40 foot connexes. The idea is that one of them will essentially be Joe's workshop and we can even put in like a wood burning stove in there for him to keep it warm. And then the other one can be used for whatever, storage, hay storage, feed for the animals. The center of it, we would like to have that closed in on both sides so that if it's winter time, Joe can be in there in the warmth and work on a truck or the snow machines or whatever, but essentially have both of those ends where they can open up so it can be a drive-through spot. So you can go in one end and just drive out the other if he's working on the boat or the Polaris or things like that. And then the top of it eventually most definitely not next summer, but the plan and the reason we want to have that flat roof there on the connexes is because we would like to make a guest cabin on top of it and make the cabin match the main cabin with the cedar siding, the green roof. I think it would look super cute. We were dreaming this morning, fantasizing and talking about future plans. So uh, I thought I would share with you guys kind of what our thoughts are. That's kind of the plan for this summer. The only goal for the summer is the garden and greenhouse area and Joe's garage, at least getting the mountain cleared out, getting the connexes delivered and put into place. And then we can work on that garage area even throughout the winter if we want to. So I think that would be wonderful and I'm super excited and can't wait to take you guys along with us. So anyway, uh, we have done absolutely nothing this morning but drink coffee and draw pictures and dream about the future. <laughs> So we got to get the day going. Joe, we ran out of daylight yesterday. We didn't get the oil changed in the generator. So we've got to get that done today. I think Bradley's ready for breakfast. <laughs> Hello.
Good boy. Oh, you lost it again. <laughs> I think you just like burying it so you can find it again. Don't you? Find it. Where is it? Is it? it? Oh, you're so smart. Oh, you're snorting. Where is it? snort. Bradley, you sound like a little piggy. Where is it? You don't realize Gunner has it or what? Your brother has it. Go. What are you doing? Gunner! What are you doing? Crazy dog. Here, hop up. Show me. Come on, hop up. Oh! <laughs> Bradley, you almost missed it. You guys are nuts. You're nuts. <laughs> go, go, go get him. Out here doing the huge, moving some snow. We got a, a little bit of snow last night, a couple inches, so. Joe does a good job of keeping it cleared. It's about 20 degrees today, so it's pretty warm. The chickens decided to come out. They're hanging out underneath the front deck. <laughs> Bet you guys are ready for summer, huh?
Ayan. Well, we're not getting much sunlight this time of year, but you know, we will take all we can get. Uh, it basically just skims the top of the tree line. It's pretty much a sunset all day is what we get this time of year in Alaska. Well, this is the most sunshine we've had in quite a while. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here like soaking it in. It feels so good on my face. You know, I was born and raised in Southern California in Arizona. So I've been asked many times by you guys, do you miss the heat and all the sunshine? Sometimes I do, I really do. I mean, it's, I'm fine. I don't mind the cold at all. I love the snow in the winter but there's nothing like sitting out in the sun and having the heat on your skin, right? So we do get that here in the summertime in Alaska, but in the wintertime, it is few and far between. So days like this, we are just soaking it up. I think we're gonna take the boys on a quick ride on one of the trails through the woods that Joe made. Uh, Kellen is doing really good going in the clearing, but he's kind of just left to doing like circles and figure eights. So we're gonna give him a little taste of trail riding.
Benjamin, yo. Come here, Benjamin. You're just gonna yo. jump off the cliff? Yeah. But how do you know what's down there? We don't care, we jump like real men. You're the best oil changer I've ever seen. You know that? You make changing oil look good, Joe. Real good. You make it look easy. And then you come inside and you smell like oil. It's like, that's what a real man smells like. You know what I'm saying? Just gonna get to take a nap somewhere and then I just sprinkle oil on me. <laughs> yeah, right. A man should smell like oil. And your beard always smells like firewood. Mm -hmm. Well, firewood and Rice Krispie treats, actually. <laughs>